hi there welcome back i'm back for real this time i know the last video i posted i said i was back and it's been four months and i haven't posted anything but i am officially back this time i promise and i'm officially back because i have decided to go into a calorie deficit so i've decided i'm going to document my journey again i did this about a year ago last summer and i want to do it again it's been a full year since i've been in any kind of true calorie deficit and have tracked and monitored things and I really have this entire year been working on increasing my muscle, putting on some weight, putting on some size, eating more food and increasing my calories. But I just want to hop on here and say I'm back and I decided to do a calorie deficit to do a cut because I have been working really hard for the last nine months to put on muscle. I've actually gained about 20 pounds which is I would say a decent amount. I'm gonna post a picture of where I ended and like where I am now. I'll figure it out and put it on screen just to show you like how I visibly look different from where I'm at now with at 20 pounds heavier versus a year ago. And personally, this is something that I would have really struggled with in the past is gaining 20 pounds. Uh, if you're a female, I feel like you can just relate to that. It is a, a big battle and a big mindset shift to really be okay with seeing the number on the scale grow, go up. And this is something that I just personally have been focusing on in my journey in my last 10 plus years of being on this journey and just having this understanding that like your body composition is so much more than what the scale actually says i would love to put on weight as long as it's muscle i don't want to put on a lot of extra body fat i would love to put weight on on the scale and i have been able to learn and understand and recognize that like the weight on the scale doesn't tell the whole story so this process for me has been a lot easier than it has ever been in the past and for the first time going through like a bulk or like trying to put on weight i feel very comfortable in my body like it has not mentally messed with me the only thing that sometimes kind of sucked in the process is i haven't bought new clothes so like i'm 20 pounds heavier but i haven't really bought more clothes or new clothes so my clothes do fit me a lot more snug and i also understand that my body goes through seasons and i do way heavier or lighter sometimes like i'm overall just a bigger or smaller person depending on what my goal is or if i'm cutting or working at maintenance this is just my lifestyle so i tend to have almost different sized clothings depending on what season my body is in but this has been the most weight that i have gained so there have been a few pieces of clothing that i'm like Mm, that's a little uncomfortable but never have I like had these moments of like feeling really uncomfortable in my body and my skin and that has personally been a really big huge thing for me because I never used to have that and I'm eating so much I tracked my calories I've been tracking my calories for like almost the last month I was planning on doing a cut a little bit earlier but Daniel has been programming for me and he was like nah 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 just wait um and kind of like finish out the program that I was in because I was really focusing on strength so I was like okay I'll push it out <laughs> twist my arm a little bit although I was also like really itching to get into a deficit but as expected the time flew by and here we are i have one two three four i have about four weeks of data of me tracking my food and i will be completely transparent here uh the weekends aren't really accounted for i did account for some weekends and the biggest thing that i actually noticed with myself is i don't overeat on the weekends i actually under eat so like my calories would be really good and really high throughout the week and then the weekend would come and like it would significantly influence my average if this is not your first time here you understand that like i I focus on averages. I don't believe that it is realistic to expect yourself to eat the same exact of macronutrients and the same thing every single day. This is just through my experience. I focus on the average with myself, with my clients. Again, the way that I'm doing it is the exact process that I would take a client through. Of course, like things are gonna be different here and there, but what I make you all do, I'm also doing. And what I am doing is what I would make a, a client coming in or any existing client do. So we look at averages. So the weekends would like really throw off my average because I would do really good. Like I have days like 24, 2500 calories and then my weekends like 1700. So it just like completely skews my average. So I did notice that. I think the big thing for me is gonna be about creating consistency on the weekend. And I do pretty consistently have alcohol on the weekend and I don't wanna necessarily cut 
that alcohol out, but I will be a little bit more mindful about it than I have been in previous weeks where I just regularly consume alcohol uh, at least one night during the week. I have about four weeks of information and like I'll screen record and share that here too, just so you can kind of see the visual because that's something that I did in the past as well. And I think it helps when you actually see it laid out this way and you think about things on an average uh, base instead of like the day to day. The hard thing for me is I have a lot of stuff that's also untracked and that's kind of how I plan to have this experience for myself. Uh, this is how I do it with some clients and it just helps create this feeling of not like you're being like super, super strict and you can also still enjoy eating almost untracked meals. So that's how I'm gonna do it because I know that there are also going to be points and times in my life where like I can't really track it and I personally do not want the frustration. I do not want the headache. I don't want the obsessiveness. I've done that so much. <laughs> I've done it a lot. It was a big part of my past and it's just not what I'm interested in doing anymore. Again, this is me. This is what works for me this is what I'm gonna do there is no one size fits all and I do this with some of my clients as well is like track as much as you possibly can and then you can just kind of record your untracked food so in my spreadsheet that I have like there are two weeks where I have a lot of untracked food so it's hard to actually know what my true calorie amount is because I have not meticulously tracked everything if you really truly want to know you have to meticulously track everything because also what I have untracked here is I put creamer in my coffee milk or heavy cream or something something goes in my coffee every single morning and I use butter to make my eggs every single morning and I put butter on my toast every single morning so those are also things that I am not tracking my coffee creamer. Again, it's something I went through. I've done the season of life that I am in. This girl does not want to track her coffee creamer. So that's something that I'm just kind of equating. Like that's a constant. It doesn't change. Same thing with my eggs and me having butter. Like it is a constant. I have the same breakfast every single morning. I probably don't use the same amount of butter every single day, but it's pretty damn close. So it's just a constant. We're just gonna keep it as a constant. It's not something I'm gonna try to track and it's not going to be something I'm gonna try to take out because it's not something I want to change. It is not something I am willing to budge on. So I'm going to change everything else around it. I would rather take other fat sources out of my diet than cut my butter out for my eggs or try to track it. Have you ever tried to track butter? It is literally the hardest thing in the world. The scale like barely even recognizes that you're taking butter off. So that's my two cents on that. That's how I am going to be approaching it and it is how I approach it with some of my clients as well. Some people like to meticulously track everything. For others it's just overwhelming or it's obsessive or it's just again like for me I'm not in that season of my life nor do I want to be. So there's a lot of calories for me that are unaccounted for but I have Average is like 2,400 calories. I have two days in one week that I randomly tried was like 2,600 calories. So I was thinking like 2,200 calories would be a good place to start. That might actually be a bit of a cut, but I'm gonna try it out for this first week and we're gonna see how it goes. And I'm going to adapt from there because again, that like that is the name of this game is you have to get really good at analyzing what is going on and allowing that to be the dictator of the choices and the actions that you take. I had this conversation with some women in my Facebook group. We're running a challenge right now. So we have weekly live trainings and we have calls. And I was talking about that uh, this with them earlier is Anytime I have a client come in, a new client, or anytime I'm going to figure out what my calories should be for myself, I have to track it first. Because it can't just like randomly pull a number out of thin air. I have to get that, but then like, maybe that's not the best choice. Like maybe I'm stretching it a little bit here. Like maybe I'm not, I don't really know because I'm not fully tracking everything. I do know that if I consistently eat 2200 calories, I will be in a calorie deficit because that's under, like there are a few weeks that I don't hit 2200 calories, but there's a lot of untracked food. Like I just, I know also from my experience that I'm hitting over that. And this is my first week. Like I'm not trying to do anything crazy. I'm more so just trying to get into the routine and habit of tracking everything, of being mindful. I want to start tracking my water again, prioritizing my sleep. And the biggest thing that I want to focus on in this cut process is increasing my steps. So I did just change my training program 
income, that is a really good thing to do when you're kind of entering like a deficit or a new phase in your nutrition because it's a new stimulus. Even from my workout yesterday, like I'm sore today, like almost everywhere. And that's because it's a new stimulus. So starting a new training program can also be a really good way to kind of like zhuzh it up and like get a little bit of a jump start. So I did that. I'm manipulating my calories a little bit. I'm gonna be mindful about my steps. I wanna try to see if I can increase my steps, but not a lot. Like my average is like 7,000, 8,000. A uh, week is my average. Sometimes I hit 9,000. I'm not like a crazy step person. So I wanna see if I can slightly increase that. But other than that, like I really don't wanna make too many changes all at once. I want to make a few changes. Things that feel simple, that feel easy, and that feel actionable for me on week one. That way I can set the tone for week one. I can kind of get the ball rolling and get that momentum going. And then I'm going to make more specific changes and I'll have more specific targets once I get a little bit of feedback as to how my body is going to respond to this. I will be doing check-ins for myself every week and I'm going to take pictures every single week so I can see how things are changing. This is how I've done it in the past. If you're going to do something really strict and really meticulous and you want to pay attention to it, so closely then I do recommend doing it every single week and I'm also going to be taking my measurements. I don't really expect myself to have any crazy changes in measurements. I know that the biggest thing for me is going to be my appearance like my visual appearance is going to change the most because I do have muscle and I do work out with that intention and that goal and that purpose and when I do get leaner it's almost like I look bigger because you can see more of my muscles. So I know that more of the changes are gonna be visually for me because I already have a lot of muscle and I'm not a high body fat percentage. But I did want to also take measurements because I would like to see how they change and I wanna use that in conjunction with my weight. So I started kind of tracking my weight and I'm gonna check my weight daily as well. If you're a client of mine or you've heard me talk before, I also make everyone track their weight every single day. As long as it's something that you feel like you're capable of doing and it's not triggering to you if it is triggering like just get rid of the scale maybe you're not in that season of your journey just yet but any one of my clients that wants to use weight as a metric to determine if they are progressing and make them do it every single day because it's the way to get a most accurate description as to what is going on with your weight and it really does help you move away from associating with that number on the scale as a good or a bad thing and if you're working on building muscle it also allows you to know if you're taking your measurements and you're tracking your weight at the same time then it's actually going to let you know when that scale is increasing if you're also increasing in body fat percentage as well if your waist measurement is is going down but your weight on the scale is going up it most likely means that you are gaining muscle and losing body fat which is the ideal thing it is what everyone should strive for and this is just going back to what I was talking about before and start of this I've gotten really good at almost like dissociating my value with that number on the scale because I actually recognize now through all of these years of experience the weight on the scale it can sometimes be a story to tell you how much muscle you have on your body so like I said I gained about 20 pounds I'm gonna look to lose around 10 uh, we'll see how that goes again I don't have like I don't have strict goal I just want to get leaner <laughs> I just want to be a little bit leaner I think losing 10 pounds would put me in a really good place I'm not looking to be at I was like 135, I'm like 155 right now. I'm not looking to be 135. Also, if I was 135, I would also expect myself to be leaner than I was previously at 135 because I really do believe I've gained muscle. It's sometimes hard to tell because I have more body fat on me so I can't see the cuts, but I've been feeling like I see the, the gains, if you will, and I've had other people say that to me as well. So I'm just kind of excited to unwrap the package and see what's underneath. I wanna take you along for journey for the ride but I just want to start start all of this by saying like what I'm doing what my intention is and I want to kind of take you through the process so again this is just my week one and I started today on Tuesday this is just gonna be my start day I'm just gonna update you every week and kind of let you know what's going on and like show you what I'm doing so that if this is something you want to try you can try it you can use what I'm saying as a way to help guide you but what I'm doing is not necessarily exactly what you should do so that's always important to remember and I want to make sure that I mention like what works for me may not work for you there is no one size fits all but the method essentially like how I'm figuring out my calories and how I'm going to manipulate it you can still apply this to you and your lifestyle it just may look a little bit different my goals for this week are to try to track everything as much as possible that I will do my best to track as much as I can but I've got that 2200 goal we'll see how it goes if I'm feeling really super hungry I might make a little tweak in the middle of the week because your goal has to feel good for my workout 
workouts. My workouts will be a priority. I need to make sure that I can push in my workouts and maintain my strength because that's gonna be more important than me like significantly cutting my calories. So tracking my calories, being as on top of it as I can without stressing about it, because your girl doesn't want to stress and be obsessive. I'm going to start tracking my water and I'm going to try to increase my steps a little bit. I'm just focusing on those really simple things in the beginning and I'll see what happens after the week and I'll see you back here and I'll let you know what the plan is. But that's uh, it for today. I am excited to take you along for the ride. Thank you so much for watching this video for being here. If you have been a part of my channel for the past few years, like thank you so much for being a part. I have really not done the best job of being active on YouTube. It was something that I literally did every week. But again, life changes, uh, seasons of life change. This will be fun and I think it would be useful to anybody watching it and to anyone who's looking to kind of jumpstart this experience. So if you do have any questions, let me know. You can always write them on the comments. Thank you so much for watching this video. I'm excited to see where the next 10 maybe 12 weeks take me I'm thinking in the grand scheme of things to be continued I'll let you know but until next week I will see you next week bye